I've been playing around with Webflow memberships a lot in the past few months, including creating a bunch of templates for different membership use cases. I built one for resources, one for a tech blog, one for releasing and hosting a video course, and a paid news template, a video library for exercise, and I've even built a membership site where you can pay a subscription to get photos of my dog sent to you on a monthly basis. The tools that Webflow has added with memberships has unlocked a large array of different ways to build membership sites natively in Webflow. Now, can we build a Netflix clone in Webflow or a HelloFresh clone or Udemy? No, we can't, which is to say that the easiest way to understand what you can build with Webflow memberships is by understanding its limitations, by knowing what you won't be able to build. So today we're going to look at those limitations, the best use cases that I've found within those limitations, and the right shade of red on red to use for call to action buttons. So let's jump in. So first, let's look at the limitations. And let me know that when I talk about these, I'm saying limitations right now, as of 12.32 on the 25th of November in the year 2022. But these limitations are likely to change in the future and unlock much more functionality. So memberships is still in beta, which means it's still early days and it's impossible to have every single need and use case met natively and do it while also building a million other new features into Webflow, including components, dev link, and making Papyrus the default font. But anyway, limitations. So within Webflow memberships, we can lock and unlock certain pages depending on whether someone is logged in or not. So I can have a website with videos and if someone is logged in, they can see all of my videos. And if they aren't logged in and they try to view a page, they get directed to an access denied page. And so this is all fine. But the limitation that I wanna point out is the difference between locking an entire page and taking you somewhere else versus locking content on a page. So for example, if you wanna view the horrifying music video for Kanye's song, Famous, you're not pushed to a different page prompting you to log in. You instead still see the same video page, but the video itself has been replaced with a locked message to prompt you to sign in. So limitation number one is not being able to hide content on a page rather than the whole page itself. And that brings us to limitation number two, and this is a smaller one, but it's the ability to have different access denied pages. So if we can't hide specific content on a page, then the next best step is showing an access denied page that's relevant to the content that you're trying to access. So we have two users, one user whose name is Muhammad, he isn't logged in and he's trying to access a page locked behind a paid plan. And then our second user, whose name is also Muhammad because it's a common name, he is logged in, but he's only logged in under a free plan. He hasn't paid for a membership yet, which means he also can't view the page locked behind a paid plan. And so the issue is that these two Muhammads we now have to send to the same access denied page, even if the reason that they're denied is different. So now on our access denied page, rather than having a specific message like you need to sign in, we need to have a generic message to cover all the reasons that someone might be denied access. Next minor limitation. I currently have a news site with a bunch of different articles, most of them news about Lauren Epsom, but within this collection of articles that I have, I want some of them to be free. So most of the CMS items, the articles, are locked behind a paywall, but some of them I want to be able to toggle as free articles or something of the sort. Well, we can't lock or unlock certain items within a CMS collection. We can only lock the whole collection itself. And so one workaround would be to create a second collection for our freely accessed items. So this limitation isn't a complete mood killer, but it is something to note. One last limitation is around what I can favorite when I'm logged in, which is the fact that I can't favorite anything. So in a job board, I can't add a job to my watch list or for a recipe site, I can't favorite a recipe to my account and so on. And so this can be a deal breaker for certain kinds of sites that people are looking to build, especially when there are alternatives on the market that do have this feature such as Jetboost. So all in all, that's four limitations that I've had to work around when building membership templates. But let's not forget all of the use cases I've currently built membership sites for. A resource library, a tech blog, a video course, a news template, a video library. And let's not forget about Luna Monthly. It's only $89 a month and you can get unlimited photos of my dog sent straight to your door on a rare occurring basis. So the kind of website that is a great fit for memberships are ones that are focused around lightweight libraries such as a video library or a library of articles or a course that has a series of videos. And the flow of a membership website looks a little something like this. First for free membership sites, that is sites where we don't need to collect money from a user, all of our locked content is blocked through memberships and so naturally our access denied page will direct users to sign up and they can do just that and then they'll be able to access that content. And so a use case might be to lock off a job listing page and then when a user is signed in, they can apply for that job. 
And there are obviously many other small use cases where it makes sense to hide content that's only visible for users who are signed in. So free memberships are nice and simple. And now on the other side, we have paid membership sites where users have to sign up for a paid subscription or product of some kind. And for the side, we have to have Webflow e-commerce enabled. And so then we add our membership types as products and users have the option to buy those products. So let's get the $19 a month plan. And then when the user purchases this, they get to the confirmation page where we can add a box and a call to action to take them back to their now accessible content. And so there are plenty of use cases where you can give access to content for a user after they pay, whether that be a subscription price like for Headspace or a one-off payment like for a future course. Well, it's crazy to me that there's a course just specifically for carousel design. But that's all I have of my thinking around Webflow memberships and what you can use it for. But let me know if there's something that you think I missed out in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching. Make sure to indicate when changing lanes and I'll see you on the next one.